I'm shooting something right now. You're going to wait. Now you go to red mark all the way to the top or what? That's a good that's really good thought because I mean webbing ain't gonna be quick enough, right? And I think that's what do you think about that course? What do you try to say? Well the new device is called a rescue pump. And the combination of the equipment that we're using is called rescue CPR, which is a brand new uh, technology which is recently FDA. Go ahead. Okay. So in conventional CPR we press on the outside of the chest and while we get some heart filling, it's not a lot. And that's because there's unregulated flow of air back into the chest on the recoil phase. This device is the rescue pod, which is part of what we're doing. And by putting that on, it decreases the airflow in to improve the bellow effect of CPR. So if you press on it, you have increased heart filling. The next step in this rescue CPR process is basically a plunger a CPR device. It looks differently than this, obviously. But what this does is it use, utilizes the same uh, concept as, as the uh, rescue pod, but, sorry, but when you press, you also can pull up past the neutral point to expand the chest further, which enhances the bellow effect uh, that we see with regular CPR. Okay. Okay, first of all, Doctor, your name? Mark Escott. Spell your last name? E S C O T T. Okay, tell me, first of all, tell me how this device was first came about. So the device first came about because of a single patient back in the 1980s uh, whose son did CPR with a toilet plunger. Uh, that patient survived, was admitted to the ICU, and the ICU doctor noticed this mark on the middle of the chest, which was unusual, and asked what it was about. The son said he used a plunger to do CPR, uh, and that got him thinking that perhaps there was something to that. Uh, that doctor, Dr. Keith Lurie, then developed uh, an investigation uh, to look at the mechanics of using negative pressure CPR, and eventually we have the device we have today. Y'all were, were pretty much in the test phase of this uh, device too. Tell me what all went through the testing on this and the before this first, first came to market and before they were able to do the FDA approval on it. So there was a multi-year study done with many EMS services in the United States, which was published in The Lancet in 2011. Okay. That, that uh, study showed that with this device and this technique that the survival from cardiac arrest could improve as much as 49 percent over standard CPR. Okay, and then now they came out, uh, FDA approved it. So what, uh, how did Montgomery County come into this then? So after the FDA recently approved it, uh, we were approached by the company that, that sells the device, Zoll, uh, to be one of the uh, initial uh, providers in the United States to use it. In fact, we're one of ten and the only one in Texas uh, to be deploying this, this model at this stage. Uh, and that's because we've been working with the company over the past several years uh, in focus groups to develop deployment models and uh, uh, enhance discussions about this device. Now, prior to this, what was available to you? Uh, prior to this, uh, we traditionally used standard CPR, pressing on the chest and uh, using a, a bag and mask to, to provide oxygenation. Uh, we then started utilizing an automated CPR device, which was, is also good. Uh, this is really the only device combination that shows this dramatic improvement in cardiac arrest survival. Now, the difference between the old system, cost and size-wise, compared to new system, cost and size-wise. Yeah. So the cost of these devices are around $1,400 a piece, uh, plus the, the device that goes on the mouth. Uh, so there is an expense involved, but the, the results that, uh, that we see uh, from the Lancet study really make it worthwhile and one of the most effective interventions potentially that we have on, on the ambulance. And weight-wise, we're looking at what, a pound, pound and a half? It's, it's very, very light. It's easy to, to throw into a backpack. Uh, it's very portable, uh, which is why it's, it's a device which is easily deployed to fire departments, first responders, and our, our ambulances. How does that compare to the automated CPR uh, unit you have now cost-wise and size-wise, so cost-weight size-wise? Yes, the, the automated CPR device is much larger uh, and much more expensive. They're about $15,000 a piece, which doesn't make it practical for us to deploy uh, in a manner that we can a device like this. And what about weight-wise on those automated systems? They're maybe 10 pounds. 
So how long before these are implemented in Montgomery County now? So what we're doing right now is we're training our, tra our fire department trainers so that we can uh, get them to, to train their personnel on the device uh, and also develop deployment models uh, and clinical guidelines associated with it. So the plan is to roll this out into the field uh, in as little as a month. Now, the compression is going down up. You've got the gauge on there. What is the Correct. gauge doing? That gauge measures how much is being compressed and how much is being pulled up. And the way this device works is by doing effective compression down and effective uh, negative pressure up. And that's, again, enhancing that bellows effect to increase blood return to the heart, perfusion of the brain, uh, and overall outcome. a good peripheral pulse for WASP because with the devices, we have patients that open up their eyes, move around, tell people to stop doing compression. So yeah. uh, you can't use, obviously you can't just use capnography. Micro, you'll see your, you know, your capnography, you've got a high capnography waveform. And what does that all tell the medics? So, something's going on. Yeah. We're utilizing these gases. So yeah. expect that. Um, if you have somebody that does the micro ROS, they have a good peripheral pulse pump, do not use the IT. That needs to be removed also. Okay. Is it they if they are having effective neurological response, gasping, grabbing, gagging, eye opening, stop, stop talking, <laughs> and you stop and they're pulseless. Yeah, they chem chemical. Yeah. Right. Involved. In fact, we had one of these cases with a Lucas device recently. Yeah. Like, why the, uh, we're talking here. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're going to break into groups. Let's okay. take uh, Doc, is that other stuff that we call it? Yes. Yeah, so we're going to turn back here. Yeah, we've got a little bit of a break. I think one person is going to be able to pass this. Oh, okay. 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 Oh, So when you go down, you know you're going to two plus Yeah, yeah. So I can't stand alone. When you let go, look where the Yeah, if you're using this, you know the beast. Felix is already represented. That's pretty cool. Yes. Tone is down, up, down, up, down, up. We were going faster than that. <laughs> yeah. Great technique. And once you get the technique down, you turn the metronome on. All right, so try that. Here, if you come here and just hold down side and actually you do the ventilation whenever it comes to ventilation. Um, they're about to start here. Um, 